from a ball, the words like under underachiever. Like there are many highly talented Filipino players, but in tournament pool, pool they, they never really shown. Like people expect them to. Yeah, it's funny that. But the ones that have cold. spent the most time, I think, eventually get the success we expect them to get. It's hard to come, you know, sparsely, right, to some yep. of these events and really expect to play that well. I was kind of like that, to be honest with you. I was kind of a guy that played pretty darn good, but then I, when I started playing professionally, it took me a long time to win a match, it seemed like. Oh, yeah, and sh uh, same goes for Shane, actually. Yeah. You know, it took him years to to find his groove in the, in the matchroom, to, matchroom events. Al Yusef lost 43 kilos. I went over and asked him because he looks like a different guy. Yeah, big change. Big change, which of course will give him more stamina and confidence. Well, I was told when he was a, a young man, he was in very good shape. Military, maybe, or police there in Kuwait. Difficult here. It looked like he may have had a look at the two ball and that gap yeah. between the nine and four. Don't know if he has the left edge of it to cut it in. You would assume he would have shot already if that was the case. He's playing low on the cue ball. So Scary. he's got a lot of it, huh? He's got a lot. Or a drag shot, maybe? Nice. Played it nice. I don't know if that would have been my shot. Yeah, with that much, he could have rolled maybe onto the ball. Or, or play a high ball and send the two ball all the way up table. It's a little more aggressive. You think the slick conditions made him keep it a little more simple until you get a little more used to what's going on? Yeah, maybe. You know, keep it simple. That's always good. But for me, that kind of stroke that he needed to play for this shot was a little bit tricky as first in the match. It's a very good cue. Very straight stroke. Gets a little quick at times, I guess, when the nerves are high. But who doesn't? Right. So you spoke about a slick clock. The two is frozen or real close to the rail. So it's going to be difficult to get that cut and bite in the ball to come back. Not run into the three ball. I don't know if I really try to get the right English here. Maybe a tough ball to judge, to be honest with you. Just making the ball yeah. the first shot. Looking at it, he's quite above it, though. I wonder how many players, and maybe we'll find this stat out during this match, how many players Kuwait brought to the event. I think two, him and Butter. Okay. Poland, 13 players in the 128 field. So, yeah, the host country is one thing. You know, maybe they get additional spots at times, but you could say Poland definitely deserves one oh, of those yeah. spots. Oh, yeah, I mean, every, anyone who follows the Euro Tour knows that, that in the last 32 of a Euro Tour, having 8, 9, 10 poles is not an exception. Right. So, nice try by Abdullah. Yeah, is, go ahead, well, he can still choose to go for offense here. He could bank and come around to 4-6, but he's lining up with the level Q, so I think he's looking for the safety. Would you keep it simple again and just bump the 6, roll the 3 across and bump the 6? You may leave an easy kiss, kick shot, but... Or thin it and on. bring the cue ball back to the left. Yeah, behind the 8-9. Nice, uh, nice confidence there early taking on the bank shot. Yeah, it wasn't the most confident stroke, but you got it done. So this cuts, obviously. Doesn't need to go anywhere near mid-table, just, you know, see the five. It'll always be on. Yeah, when the shot's like this, you keep the making the ball the most comfortable way, the most important, right, with the five hand. Might as well cut this by some piece. And you got to realize when the cloth's new, the ball's cut a little easier, right, yeah. with the good conditions. And you mentioned him pulling a quick one now and again. He can look ready there. 
there's like a lot of guys that when the pause is a little longer in the back, that means the backstroke usually was a little quicker coming coming back, and maybe the timing was a hair off. So that's a uh, nice, you know, nice chance for Chua. This man in the chair did all the work. And now a roadmap for uh, for uh, Chua. Take the opener. What I found about Chu is kind of like some of the newer players from the Philippines. A little better cueing, uh, not the wasted motion of the pump stroke from guys years ago. Wasted motion. Well, a good one. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know if it's wasted, but you know, like I always think about Bustamante. If you watch him early in his career, how much he simplified his swing throughout the years. And even with the carbon shafts, it's you can take it even further, simplifying the stroke. It's even more difficult to underhit a shot. Straight in nine. Talked about a little bit on the ride over me and Johan, but still trying to get the breakdown better. That's the only thing that is concerned so far to start this 2023 World Championship. Thank you. I'm not so experienced with that break, but what I hear from players is that it's all in the speed, so they're not allowed to soft break. If they would, you know, they're, they're, they're confident to make balls and control the cue ball. It's the, the speed, if you, if you add speed, it becomes harder to make the one inside. Yeah, what I've found is just more of a stroke break, like a draw stroke more than, you know, if you're spinning the ball, it seems like the balls run out of the template more versus hop out of the template. If you hit more of a flat ball, they hop more, and you just don't get the, the results like you do if you, like you said, more of a, I guess, 60%, something like that. I wouldn't know. I think you would like it, just because the type of break, it's almost like the driver in golf. Uh, the one day you think you have it, and then the next day it kind of oh, makes yeah, you humble yeah, again. Yeah, so. yeah. One to zero and and yet, also Chua. with the Mr. Euro Chua Tour break, break, like what we had, nine on the spot, uh, three, three point rule. In the beginning, players had trouble, like eight, nine, nine years ago. And you know, now they make it look easy. Well, I think it's a compilation of things. Uh, I think the variety, anytime you have to cut them, there's going to be some variables. Yeah. Um, it magnifies anything that's off anytime you have to cut them. I think. Plus the tighter pockets. I think the combination of all of that really, really makes the break shot and the rules so much better. Just watch at the end of the tournament and just see the guys still standing and how hard they've worked just looking at their faces. Yeah. Yeah, this wreck is gone. Oh, he's not playing for the push. So that tells me he's straight on the two, even on his overhead camera, it doesn't look like it. And he's very good at the jump to take this one. Wow, beautiful shot. For myself, I'm not a, as good a jumper, so the rollout probably 100% throughout. Oh, the yeah. And in a big stretch there, too, huh? And that ball was almost to the middle of the table, the cue ball. It's a big shot right yeah. there. going to try and come two cushions above the six and here he's going to play for an angle on the floor I think to track the cue ball up the table and back oh, he oh. Oh. yeah so in the back of his mind was the slickness of the cloth and the, the fear of not not getting enough grip on the ball you can solve it on the slick cloth by aiming a little thicker in the pocket yeah, and he missed his mark by some piece there to catch half the six ball. Uh, Yusuf has got to feel pretty relieved after a big mistake in the open game and a jump shot that looked to maybe surrender game two. No Omar Halshini here this year. 
a couple, a couple of years ago. Semifinal. Oh, runner up? Excuse me. Yeah, he lost against uh, Elvin two years ago. Milton Keynes. Elvin, one of the best performers, or the best performer in the past 10 years. Lost the final in 2014, won in 2016. And won that final against Omar and lost last time against uh, Shane in the final. So that's, that's real strong. Yeah, and Alvin is such a unique guy in my mind that we all know how great he is, but I'm not around him for every event, but it seems like every tournament he plays, he starts off a little shaky here and there, but just grows and grows and grows every match. And of course, that's a great recipe. But for such a great player to have those struggles so consistently early in events and then get it together yeah, is that, just something that, amazing. That's how he's wired. Yeah. Also in, in, in practice, you know, he, he has difficulty finding a high gear. You know, he, he needs that struggle to come out stronger, ready. Like when he won the, the championship league, the pool league, some two, three years ago. He needed like a gazillion chances to qualify for the finals. Yeah. And once he got there, he played winning pool and got the final. Well, there's, you know, different techniques. And of course, I don't know if anyone I would steer a person to more than you, but I have players that really play by stroke and then some that like to aim more. And I think Albin is more of a guy that is a stroker of the ball. And once he gets more settled with the stroke, everything starts to come into play more yeah. and more. Yeah, but it's 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 not an automated piston-like stroke. No, 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 because no. Because there's uh, you know the, the the aim players. I could main, main players who who are able to get down, not move, just stay there for three four seconds, pull back and deliver. And that's absolutely not how Elvin plays. No, I think some of the best are are quite not like that to be honest with you i think it's more timing in the stroke once they find you know that nice back and forth uh and with some confidence in matches yeah so uh, which names would come to mind then as what which one well, well be, being uh, uh, the players with a rhythmic warm-up routine uh well i think most of the greats to be honest with you i think most of them um, take a little more time um, to, to get in gear. Well, before, for sure, I, I, I think about Earl, I think about Efren. Now I would think about uh, Shane, you know. Yeah, I think they're like, even the Polish players, right? Like Fortunski, oh. there's a bunch of guys, <laughs> right? Shevchek playing on table one yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Oh, right? oh, oh. I, I, th I think Cracking there's a combination three. more of these Our days of like very straight strokes, great aiming these. and everything, but still to win the title, yeah. they have to really get in tune with their stroke. Yeah. So we saw two gifted wrecks, Chua, the recipient of the first, and Al Yusuf of the latter. You know, you could say that Al Yusuf with more experience on the break shot. Now, he added a little right spin to that. Most of the successful ones I see with straight draw. Oh, yes, uh, yeah, straight draw. So I've no, as a playing, I have no experience with this break. So I just tank into the knowledge of all the players and what I hear is stay away from side spin. Just try and arc it. And some players even go so far to, they make the choice to run into the nine or arc underneath the nine ball. Which is sick. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's a long-term thing that, you know, they're trying to hit their mark uh, yeah. as much as they can, even though it doesn't always look work out that way. Well, aim for the stars, reach the sky. Right. A high ball. Yeah, does he have to stroke it much? It looks like he really does. Let's yeah. Get around the table. Big cluster in the middle, 368. Yeah, there's a happy medium on that type of shot with the slick felt, uh, not to make it hug so much. We've seen some aggressive shot selections, first by Al Youssef and later by Chua. Now, Al Youssef has a good angle to play straight back and keep position on the three with some element of defense. Yeah, the cuts, besides the three being tied up, you don't want to make a cut shot like this and not get position, right? But I remember like a Mika from years ago, he would cut this ball right on him with 
not even worry about it really. Oh yeah, yeah, but that that was so nice when Mika was on. You know, he lets the cue ball loose. He right. would find like a natural four or five rail route and come into position. I think it's kind of there, to be honest with you. I think you can get a maybe above the four, up the table a few rails. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So he would always have sight on the three, maybe not a shot. Bank has a lot of merit, but I th I'd like to cut shot, I think. I think he may run four rails into the purple. Oh, he ran into the ball, so he used some right spin there to hit the two a little oh, thicker. Oh, yeah, I like it. That's confidence, though, early. I like it. Well, he found a way to be comfortable with the cut. And at the same time, you know, going into those balls with speed it was highly unlikely to not see the three. Yeah, another tester here if he's going to float this in and come two rails maybe level with the eight, something like that, to cut the four. Yeah. Yeah, it's on, but that's a scary shot. He can be, you know, he can worry about snookering behind the eight. He can worry about a, a skid. Pretty comfortable. Oh yeah. Maybe even held it too much. I think he can get at it to make the four. Played it nice. Yeah, and if he has to like put a little left English on this to get around the six to make the four, this makes the rack very difficult because you don't have choices on getting on the five to get back to the six. So. Yeah. He's not elevating. This is how he addresses the ball always. So he had plenty of room. He took a lot of time, so much so that we didn't know for sure if he saw enough. And that tells you how much heat and tension there's out there already. Double knockout, first couple of rounds. And of course, position so important in our game and thinking correctly, but getting confident pocketing the ball. That's that's what I like to really get into at the beginning of a tournament when I used to play. Because you're always going to play position. These are great players, right? But yeah. you get into really tuning in on knocking balls down. Looks like he's been a little inside on this. 50-yard line. Yeah, I thought he may float that one rail more it's than. It's funny how uh, towards the end of the rack, you know, he, he's looking, he's looking solid, not at ease yet, but then at the end of the rack, something happens. I think he catched that a little thick, right? Yeah, probably so. He can beat the side, I think, but uh, it's not easy. Otherwise, he'll cue downward and pull the ball. Ooh, he's putting inside on this. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and he's striking downward. This is... I don't know if he's go going to end up playing the shot like he prepared now, but he had his hand on the rail, and then his bridge hand was on the rail, which will automatically make him shoot downward. If I'm working with players, that's something I'm allergic to. It depends on the shot for me. Uh, to me, it's more about... If you're around the middle of the cue ball, a little yeah. off, you get more level, of course. We start getting on the angles of the cue ball, edges of the cue ball, we get a little more angles. Just depends on what type of shot you're shooting. Uh, that's another one he's caught thick. It's not going to leave anything easy, but... I think for now we can safely say that a pattern is emerging. If Chua here runs out. Yeah, this is the type of shot early, if you can stay calm with the stroke, the pocket plays decent for you. You don't have to hit it perfect. Later in the tournament, we'll see how that goes.
Petey. And maybe fortunate, and the referee will be on top of this. John Lehman. Well, lucky and not. Still missable. Yeah, shooting away just a little bit, but not much. And you notice him short in the bridge there. Yeah, I, I would like to jack up here. He put a nice draw stroke and takes Shot. a 2-1 lead. Wow. Doing all the work, all Yusef. Then uh, I think due to a thick hit on the 6, he lost position on the 8 ball. Yeah, it's winter break, so the stakes will be at a premium. Now Yuki Oi at the back here. Oi puts in a lot of miles. A lot of miles, very experienced, and that's why he's checking out this match, because later today he'll be playing on this table. He's playing Mickey Krause from Denmark. Yeah, another kid that uh, I expect to really see some results pretty soon at some time or another, Mickey. He's now played these events for a few years, and very good talent. Yeah, but the competition is fierce. You need to do so many things right. Track number four, our current score is two to one in favor of Mr. Chua. Mr. Chua, two break. That's a nice roll. We'll see in the replay that he uh, overcut the one ball, lost the cue ball, but it ran into the eight. Got bumped into position. That's nice. Yeah, big shot here. And I'm not really sure. What do you play for? I know. What's the position here? Can he go forward? And beat the scratch to get to the back side of the three, well, maybe play a safety on the three. He's already made his mind up, I think, inside three, four rails towards the three. Oh, he made that look easy. But Johan's a big talent, that's oh. for sure. Four nine, maybe playable. Oh, you yeah. did real nice. If he's straight enough, he can hold maybe on an easy shot on the three for the four in the side, possibly. I don't know if it goes in the corner. Corner doesn't seem to be available. Oh, this is going to be disappointing here. Oh, wow. So the 4-9 is not on. The 4 to the corner is not on. He slow rolled. Yeah, and he knew it right away. Now Yusuf, an easy shot on the 3, obviously, but nothing easy on the 4. What do you do? He's queuing low. Come, he can't be coming into the 6, can he? Wow, what a nice touch this is. <laughs> Beauty. Very nice. And that's what Alex was talking about. You can play the three a little thicker at times, or the object ball it is, Yeah. to control the cue ball. He's playing with a lot of courage, I feel. Both players. But from Chuha, you know, we know. Al Youssef is showing it. Courage here on the shot he played. You know, if he does a little too much or too little, he might lose any vision on the three, uh, on the four. Yeah, anything off almost makes that shot look a little silly on the three, really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Got a little straighter here than he wanted. He can't go forward two rails. Maybe he can cheat the pocket. Yeah, I think he can. If he can punch it and come to the right by one ball would be enough. Mm. 
Yeah, that's yeah. enough. Now he has that slow stroke with a lot of quality and smoothness, but on a shot like this, on a shot that he has on the six, I'd like him to punch it a little more. He's lucky that fell. Yeah, but exactly for that reason, on a shot like that, if you do things too slowly, you sort of over overcut it. Seems he's calmed things down a little bit with his backswing. Almost too slow, yeah. in, a, in a sense. Well, it, it depends very much on, on the shot. What what shot are you playing? Yeah, but much different, I think, before his backswing. Maybe he's consciously worked on that Thank you. to slow it down since last year. So 2-2, two, two, a very cagey affair here between Al Yusuf from Kuwait and Chua from the Philippines. And yeah, the two favorites on our main table, of course. Wojciech off to an early lead, I think 3-0 maybe. And Ruiz the same. No, 4-0, excuse me. So sure he made it again to the World Championships. Why am I still surprised when I see him around? Every time I see him around, he made it again. I saw him this morning at the hotel. Don't know him real well. Heard lots of things about him, of course. He's colorful. Yeah, colorful, that's a good word. <laughs> a lot like our game these days, which I love. We are currently tied at two games apiece. Mr. Al Youssef, to break. Four wrecks played in this match, and every time the player coming in first with the first chance, gifting the wreck to the other player. And he's had a variety of breaks so far. Took a little speed off there. Too much so, I think. I think so, too. I think it was close to a warning, to be honest with you. At lighter speed, sometimes you get the corner ball to kiss right there by the corner and, and, and get knocked in where you don't have to make the one. But you now Chua sizing up the three ball to get to the four. That really opens the rack up. Needs to make a choice if he's going to position somewhere in between the six nine over there, still on the right side of the table, or come down all the way. With overspeed, yeah, that makes sense. Although he's still a little bit thin on the two. So there's this area where he can cut the three. He wants a natural off the three, if he can. Or he could use a high right. Now he's got to kind of stun it a little bit. Of course, he caught two. the two a little thick, huh? Yeah, but, but to go where? He needs to come... Are you saying short rail and then to the right of the six? Yeah, so just I would have liked to have been the cue ball a little more left here. Yeah, and but just run off the three a little. Yeah, but his route towards the three could even go in between the rail and the five. Smaller gap, but more yeah. natural. And there's no risk of a scratch on the right. So the work is done. Six balls left. I don't know why he would consider playing the five to the side pocket. That's what he looked at. Yeah, smart shot there. That's the thing. You can't let the world championships change your game. And I see that a lot of times with guys. They want to run to an easier oh, shot yeah. a yeah. lot of times. Yeah. Talked about that on the 10-footer last week in Kentucky. It seems like the guys that play the best, they just kind of keep it the same as the nine-footer. Well, that's, you know, that's a trademark of Federer. He didn't win the, 
that tournament, that special, you know, uh, Federal Gorse, but he keeps it easy. He sticks to his same routine. Yeah, and what you'll find with a lot of those guys when they have a choice, they play position to where they make a lot of similar swings. Yeah, same speed. Yeah, they stay in that, that small gap of speed with the cue stick. I noted here, by the way, how short uh, Chua's forehand is. Very compact. Two balls away of punishing Al Youssef for that scratch on the break. Got a little straight. It's got to maybe cheat the pocket just a touch. Nice. Very positive again. We mentioned it a couple of times. Positive in that he plays to come all the way down for the nine. Was it a scared stroke, his position from the eight to the nine? No, and I think you were talking about his bridge length earlier. Um, I like the bridge length. Not too, too short, of course, but the long bridge to me is, has caused a lot of problems with players. Oh, yeah. Seems like it creates a shorter stroke uh, for most, actually. But. Um, do I a shorter? Well, like I a think, shorter backswing, uh, almost, uh, you know? I'll, what I think, you know, if it works, keep doing what you're doing. But in general, I see that a bigger forehand causes problems because not because players limit their backswing, but they actually open it, open it up all the way. So on soft shots or soft medium speed, medium speed. Of course, you'll decel, yeah. Yeah, the, they'll yeah. use that whole length and then deaccelerate. Well, I, most most of the greats that I knew changed the bridge length according to the shot. And rather than oh, change yeah, the swing yeah. so much, yeah, you yeah, change yeah, yeah. the bridge length. I think that's yeah. the easiest way to learn it. And it becomes natural too, right? And there are some, some that don't, like Mark Selby in snooker, he, he doesn't. He always plays the same bridge length and it's oh, so difficult. And it seemed Chua had the best speed to start on the break shot. Oh, Cuba was tracking towards the side pocket. But that was the one that didn't draw as much more than like a center ball. And you'll see the one hit short a lot with that. It Wait, like. come again. Like he kind of didn't draw the ball as much. It kind of seemed more stunnish. Okay, right? yeah. He made it come back on the thickness of the hit more than on the spin. Okay, a shot that uh, Yusuf usually would take on. He's got to come forward with the cue ball to get position. Yeah, but do you play position or do you... Focus on the pot and go towards the two and see what happens. I think high, just straight high, I come underneath the two a little bit, maybe play short side. I got to focus on the ball here because yeah. top inside maybe doesn't get me position either. Maybe puts me past the nine. You want to make the ball and not scratch. And from there, figure it out. That's why maybe I wouldn't have gotten into the ball as much, but you got to like the way he struck it. Yes. Yeah. And he hit it thin. Look at the one ball where it goes in the pocket. Thinking had he hit it thick, he would have lost the cue ball more. Yeah, a touchy little safety here. Yeah, what's the shot? I don't see any anything obvious. Uh, left side of the two okay to come behind the six? Maybe. We'll get another look here in a moment. Yeah, but then there's a scratch. You're tracking for a scratch, and you leave the two ball in open field. Yeah. So, so I think the two will slide one rail towards the three more than you think on the new felt. I think, anyways. Like, it won't bounce like your regular pool room, you know? A lot going on in that shot. And the problem with that shot is if you just leave a piece of the two ball, even if it's down here, look at all the balls yeah. that he can play safe behind, right? That's why I like an open two ball there, maybe try to run the cue ball a little bit. Yeah, give him distance. Choose something that works, that's, that's manageable. 
and it was always going to be tough. Now, Chua has a nice angle to open that three ball. He's looking at a two rail route. Yeah, and this is all feel to come two rails and not hit the six. If he hits the six, he probably goes by the three nine. Quick tr transition there. Ooh, maybe gave up. Well, it's wreck six, so basically Al Yusuf is supposed to win this one, <laughs> <laughs> the way this match has gone. Yeah, but he overcut that by some mark, about two inches from the hole. There's a little gap behind the nine, but I don't. It, it's very tricky to play the two ball into it. Yeah, why not kick and stick? Good shot. You already mentioned how good a jumper Chua is, but now there's very little distance between the two balls. Yeah, it's a matter if he feels like when there's small distance, if you can get enough power on this to kind of knock the two around table. And he missed it, he could curve the cue ball big time. Okay, open. First thing comes that comes to mind is that a big angle on the two, it's difficult to pot and hold for the three. And the stop shot snooker behind the four is guaranteed. Yeah, the only offensive way you could go about this is maybe using the purple to hold the cue ball off of one cushion with the three and four handy. Oh, the, nice. The yeah. safety is the shot, though. Nice. He has a nice touch, Al Yusuf. But right there, like that's a big backswing, right? For that oh, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah, but so. yeah, but therefore I say he has a nice touch. Of that, course, that's that, talent. <laughs> yeah, that, that he keeps uh, producing, executing those strokes with that long backswing. Yeah, I just wonder when when nerves get higher. Of course, event, yeah, that, yeah. That's that, where you really wonder. Yeah, but we're hold. the cynical commenta commentators, the right. cynics. Well, just, I think it's fair to talk about, though, because of the year he had. He was in position to maybe win a huge event last year, yeah. right? I mean, just getting down to the, the, like Carl says, the business end of things. Yeah. And that's where he had some of his, you know, not so great matches. Um. Yeah, when, when we talk about backswing and deacceleration, uh, I think about uh, Tyler a little bit. He has worked on that. And then probably, you know, you guys have spoken about it mm -hmm. over the past couple of years. Of course, Tyler, you know, one of America's best. But on a lower level, you see it all the time. People trying to copy that, and then it becomes like it becomes even exponential. They go even slower. Right. Yeah, slow is controlled. You know. So, if you want to play your best pool, you have to get to where you're not controlling much. Yeah, that's interesting because when you said that slow is controlled, many people would have thought, "Yes, I want that." Right. But that's not, you want to, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It has to feel controlled to fix it sometimes, but you eventually don't want that, right? Yeah. Under pressure. All right, a good solid hit. Now he's looking to cut this ball from three rows to the middle and up by the left side. I would have to entertain the bank shot. Oh, yeah. And do you play bank controlled speed or double speed? I, I got to go for it here, stunning the cue ball forward a little bit. Yeah, there's the double speed. Double speed, hello. Yeah, just like that. Which works on a new cloth. On on this equipment, you can play you can play this as a two-way shot. On an older cloth, this wouldn't work. Well, maybe on a on yeah on a diamond table perhaps. 
I was about to say that I think the diamond table yeah. brought that shot more into play than yeah. ever before. Yeah, but back in Europe, we don't have so many diamond tables. Right. Um, yeah, so we're very unfamiliar with that shot. Easy to overrun here. And if you do, you're going to have to work the cue ball. There was never an easy path. He could have maybe simplified it, got between the eight and nine going forward two rails and taken a little more shot on the four, but hard not to try and play position there. It's amazing how big the ball in the center of the table is, the black eight. Oh, yeah. It cuts off so many things mathematically, right? He can come tight of it, though, right? Not in between the six, nine. I think he could come three rails tight of the eight, maybe, to short side on the purple five. Tight on the eight, but uh, at the right on the right side. Left side of the eight is what Still I was thinking. Still stay on the left side. I think he could if he wanted. Now, if he goes past the side, that's obviously not it. Oh, he's going to catch the eight, maybe. No, he hit it perfect. Oh, nice. Threaded the needle. Okay, so this looks like Chua is going to break the pattern that we've seen for five wrecks. And this recovery shot is a nice confidence booster. Okay. Don't let it hug too much here. Coming a couple rails out for the six on the side. Ooh. Don't let it hop. Hug. You know, oh. like, you know, when the ball's close to the rail with the new, like a hydraulic, basically. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the, the cue wall, like, cue sort ball. of jumps back in line. Exactly. Which is weird. All right. Hell to serve. Doubles his lead. It looks like last year's player of the year, in my opinion, anyways, Ruiz up 6 0. And the same thing for Wojciech, 6 0 as well. Yeah. A legendary year, 2022 for Sanchez Ruiz. Everything he touched turned into gold. Well, he put in his time, right? Many, many years. Yeah. Still a young man. What is he, 29 or 30? Yeah, I, I, 30? 30, yeah. Yeah, but it's great to see that he was always there in Arcady's shadow. And I don't think too many people really foresaw, you know, what was to come. Had an idea that... that that any player could could make so many jumps in so little time. Seven, yeah, I think you could say the same about David. To be to be fair, early in his career, I don't. I'm not sure if many thought he would get to the status he did. Uh, yeah, but he he started winning early, David, and he never went on a run where he would win like many tournaments in in six months. But he he, he was always there. Yeah, I remember actually seeing him in Vegas when he played amateur league pool. Oh, yeah. On the valley tables, he was really good. Now, look at this spread to get a, a bigger lead. It's all really about this first shot, it looks like. Interesting this, how he will play this. He's slightly hampered by the nine. Slightly. Will he smooth stroke it or punch it? You would punch for comfort yeah, because it's a nicer way to hit the ball. Smooth to make the pocket receptive. Yeah, and it's all about styles a little bit, right? So now, what do you think he'll play? Much more smooth. When he's in stroke, he's when he does punch, it's very, very light. Oh wow. Like that was a punch to more to me than a, a draw stroke, right? Hit pretty firm, I think. Well, it looked like a quick one where he was still undecided. Yeah. He was still thinking about his bridge length and his backswing. Oh, that's got to hurt. It's 
So a bank to the side to avoid the five. If he's going to cut the four, he'll run. He looks like running into that five ball. 100%. Yeah, and it's running into maybe the rail and then the purple five, which may open up a scratch. So I think he's got to elevate the cue here. It's difficult to see the exact angle. Hmm. I might consider the bank from here. Nice. He was pretty sure to not hit that five ball too thick. Because then the scratch would have come into play. Now, is, is he entertaining the safety here? No, I think he's looking at the cut. Oh, wow. That's pretty thin. That's a, like a diamond and a half up and a, over a diamond over from the end rail. Maybe. Maybe he can go three rails. Similar to Chua shot in the last round, somewhat. But he also needs spin on the ball. There's a lot going on here. It looks like a lot to me, of course. These guys at the table. He's got to get between the seven nine. With the yeah, yeah, that, that's what he looked at. I was going to say, I thought oh, he would be okay. playing safe if he yeah. went that way. But for me, I probably bank at that ball myself. It didn't yeah, look too bad. because he could play a controlled cue ball, glue it to the short rail. Yeah, and the thing is, with the side pockets, you'll see the guys sometimes stay away from the real off-angle banks, even if there is some two-way. E it's just harder to make them on the new felt. Yeah, but I would like that bank because it's easy to control the cue ball. And it depends on your banking pros. Nice hit there. Watch out, nine ball. Nice wreck. Yeah. The longest safety battle we've seen. And this is the thing. Unless he's very convinced in his last inning at the table to get behind that nine. Yeah. He may have known he's not going to end up with a better shot than he had on that cross side bank. So now what? He can thin it, try and come back towards the nine or bank the four, the five towards the seven. Yeah, with the nine there, that's that's a touchy one. If this ball gets up at all, the kiss shot on the nine is not difficult. Nine is a little far away entertain just attacking the nine off of the five. Yeah, he's in a good spot now where he can attack both. Well, if that's on, then go for it. Yeah, maybe a half a tip of right English. Maybe not much. Maybe none at all. He's queuing down. Wow. Nice stroke. It was a big shot that played it nice. I might stay away from the third rail here. And you want to hit it with low right, of course, right? But the bend of the ball, um, the slick. Well, I may well, just go with a high ball. I here. don't think you need you need to go go to the third rail. Just high, you'll miss the nine, I think. Oh, absolutely. that to really slide I can't believe he tried to get to the right side of the seven which you know which means he he overhit it he hit it too low too low on the cue ball so the nerves are still there I think also with the right English he could have deflected into a little thicker hit on the six than he anticipated which will you know make you come a little thick two rails Got to edge this and play the cue ball. Three rails to the top rail. Take your chances. Chip it with spin. Mm. 
and slide. Um, it's go time, but there are still banks available that Yusef could play with built-in safety. I think if he plays it straight back to the to our right, he can play it to where he would undercut it, and if he misses, miss, miss on the short rail with the hair of inside or bank to our left and just go all in. Yeah, the twice bank you were talking about, maybe with the high ball here. The thing is, most players from distance, especially bankers, they don't mind a hair of spin, but they're not going to play it at a light speed oh, with a hair no, of spin. No, no, they would no, always no, play it with yeah. a much firmer speed with a hair of spin. Yeah. Hard to, hard to really predict everything going on with the lighter speed. Yeah, and also, uh, Chua made that speed. Uh, you know, he played a double speed and played it in the, in, in the other hole. Yeah, Al Yusuf can't be happy with that attempt. You know, it was a difficult, he was under the gun. A difficult bank. Yeah, and again was at the table running out. Thank you. When he, you know, had to go into the five, right? Didn't get the shot, decided not to play the bank. When oh, yeah, when yeah, we yeah. So possibly we that was yeah. the bank shot to yeah, take Yeah, so at the, at, at the time when he chose to play the safety and it wasn't a lock-up safety, then at best he could be a 55 to 45 favorite. And the bank, he would be more favored to make the bank and win. Yeah, and or, or miss the bank and protect the cue ball and win from there. Exactly. Yeah, well, the lesson comes after the exam, but he's still in it. But gradually, this match is going away from the Kuwaiti Al Yusuf. And reason for concern is that Chua is going to be feeling slightly better with every every time that lead builds. Our reigning U.S. Open champion is. With guns a blazing here early, eight to zero on So Shaw. Oh yeah, I saw him warm up this morning. FSR against Nick Vandenberg, and he was <laughs> he was sharp already. Ten in the morning. Track number eight. Our current score is five to two in favor of Mr. Chua. Mr. Chua, to break. Cut it very thin, so be fortunate to get a shot on the two. Yeah, he's still struggling, right? That's what he told you this morning. He said. Yep. So I don't know if the two plays by the seven. If he's got the top rail to roll out to, that would be a nice place. Uh, yeah, a nice place to get it back, I feel. Yeah, I mean, there's some shots you have there from, like, the first diamond first on the called. right. He's going to roll out to a kick shot, it appears. Don't think he would roll out to a piece of this ball, and keeping the cue ball so near. Yeah, this is for a kick. Your option, sir? Interesting, this. Yeah. Well, I... I still like that in rail a little more. You may not get a pure safety, but you could have banked the two away in between maybe the three nine, something like that, try to get the safety. But this here, a little more out of control. And it must be the double here on the bank on the two three is what he's looking at. Mm. No, if I'm kicking, I, I, I would play to kick safe. Just edge it and run well, the cue ball? Edge it and play it soft, like have the three, five, nine as blockers, but don't go up table with the cue ball. Or play like a half ball hit with top, and on the new cloth, the, the cue ball will deflect very sharply, go towards the four, eight. But then you let the two ball loose a little bit. Well, with the three there, you could kick, actually, because you're so on line with it. You can kick and hit the bottom of the two, letting the three hold the two, come to the bottom rail and over to the side rail yeah, at the nine. Yeah, go to the left of the five nine. Yeah. yeah, but and it's very easy to do actually. Yeah, but that, yeah. 
but I don't think he would need to do that now. I think that's what he's sizing up, to be fair. Because when you roll out and you're so in line with it, you feel real yeah. good about how much you're going to hit. On right? both sides. Yeah. yeah. And this one, he doesn't have to turn it loose with a lot of speed. Nah, he hit it too thick. He spun into it, which is surprising. This I thought he would hit it level. Like yeah, no but spin. my point, it depends who you're up against. Like, if Alex Pagelion leaves you that position, you got to play it because he's going to play it and probably execute it well. Yeah, I don't think uh, Al Yusuf saw the shot, actually, to be fair. I, I'm surprised, though, that he spun into it with the right English. He was yeah. trying to get the premium out of it. Yeah, or, doing a little too much. Yeah. He's got to track this up and down. I'm not sure the three passes the five. It's very important this for all Yusuf to stay in the match. It's time for him to come with 10 minutes of good pull. Yeah, this is good. Speed. Pretty good. He has a three in the corner by the eight. Now he needs to hold. Just stop the cue ball there. I don't see him try and get a better angle on the four. Oh, nice. With a slight angle. And that makes a world of difference. Yeah, I like the release of the cue much better there. he can reach it easily and what angle he wants yeah depends on the exact angle on the five you can hold here or stun him come over to the right side my preference if the angle is there back to center table well, it looks like he's playing high yeah he's got quite a bit of angle he doesn't want this to like flirt and get over the nine ish you know even if you're a foot or two away from the nine you still don't want to be queuing too awkwardly huge game here and not only of course to win this game five three but to get to knock some very good shots in time at the table This is I'll use the longest sequence of balls pocketed in the match. A good call for him to give Chua's push out back. Didn't get tempted. So, are we going to play nine ball sometime? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So, I, I think someone I told me play, that, that... I rarely play pool. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah? Yeah. Every time I go to a pool tournament, I say I'm going to start playing again, but, you know. Yeah, the same here. Like, I quit with the Moscone Cup captaincy, and then I looked at the agenda. I said, okay, what are we going to play? Yeah, right. But then I see tournaments are conflicting with other stuff and work. And so I end up playing very little, actually. Yeah, it's the closest thing to playing, being right here. You played three cushion, I heard. Uh, Pretty decent. You know, once, once in a blue moon. Yeah. I love it, though. If I'm ever around the table, I'll stay on it all day. Oh, yeah, yeah, but hard to find in the States, I guess. Yeah, it just depends on where you're at. There's some pool rooms, you know. Texas is more of like the social atmosphere pool rooms, yep. even though there are some beautiful nine. ones and some that are very much for pool, five, two, but they have to survive as well. So, yeah, yeah, sure. So something that takes up uh, 10 feet by five feet is uh, economically not always the best no choice. viable, yeah. yeah. 
I would like to say I play all the games a little bit anyways. Took a little more speed off, too thick of a hit on the one. And now pretty easy safety behind the purple five most likely, banging the one up table. Yeah, it's pretty easy if you can roll it, if you can play with the rolling cue ball, if he needs to stun it. Yeah, it's it not harder. easy, yeah. But when you're close to it, I feel these yeah. guys are going to do it. Yeah, he's yeah. supposed to get it. Yeah, stay away from not too much side spin. That's the key. And we can get away from it. A hair of side spin right there is okay. But yeah. Just not a lot. The kick and stick between the six and two maybe there. The back rail is cut off by the five. Oh, I think everything's cut off maybe besides the swerve shot. Yeah, swerve is okay, I feel, because there's no scratch. And the one is pretty big. I mean, you can hit this with quite a blunt stroke. It's not a finesse swerve. Yeah, depends if you have to go by the six or not. I don't think he does. Oh, oh he, he had to swerve just to kick at it. Oh, 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 yeah, well. He got lucky to not scratch, I feel. Yeah. He couldn't put any draw. And what he means by lucky is, if you watch watch it again, he went to the rail, got behind the one, cut it thin enough to get to the short rail with the cue ball yeah. and not into the pocket. Touchy little shot here as well. It's coming one rail into the seven. Yeah, it, oh. just, it always wants to spread, it seems like. I think he hit the cue ball too low. Well, I thought that was all about speed as well. You had to kind of creep up into there. That way the ball doesn't bounce so much, right? Yeah, but the, the, the cue ball, like, deflected all the way to the middle diamond on the short rail. Anyway, you know, it's tough out there. Absolutely. Brand new table, brand new set of balls. Go ahead, guys. Have fun. Play Biggest your World title. Championship match. <laughs> yeah. First match as well. Yeah. And really, I mean... I, mean, I, was, I was super impressed with the energy in this room this morning when I came in oh early. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the Polish crowd, and there's many that have traveled from outside of Poland to be here this week. They've, they've done their job so far. All right, we'll wait a couple of days to see if that one falls again. Yeah. Pockets might, will tighten up a little bit, but all the players will feel like in two, three days from now, they start to play really nice. He's not going to play for the corner on the six. Six to the side. Speed sensitive. Yeah, you shouldn't worry too much there with having both pockets for the seven with the eight pretty near. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, I would, I would try and always, you know, come come wide. Yeah, I don't know. When I played, I, when I saw balls ahead of me, like I don't want to make the six missable, just to get to the short pocket there. To me, it almost like made me more confident, not not to worry so much. Yeah. Now, if I had something to worry about or something to address. Yeah, I felt like, yeah, all right, that was the time. But if I had to do it every shot, it just seemed like it was pressing more and more. Oh, and more. okay, yeah, good point. But to each his own. That's that's definitely how the game is. Strokes are different, patterns are different. Just about enough there. Yeah, it's a funny shot. Slick felt one of the most overcut balls actually. We will play this with a touch of inside. In the days where Dennis Orcolo was really untouchable, that type of shot, that slow cut shot, he was master. He would rarely miss. Yeah, one of the guys that really had all the shots and still does. Surprised not to see him here as well. So, Al Yusuf's break is letting him down. Had another dry break. And then that snooker by Chua. 
Oh, Yusuf did hit the one ball, but left left the table open. You know, Yusuf's tried many different breaks as well, different speeds. Like maybe he's not so satisfied with the break shot, you know, he was practicing yeah. prior to the event. Well, I think, yeah, I think, you know, players should practice and they probably will practice at least three different breaks. You need to have plan B, plan C. Yeah, what you. worked for us in the Moscone Cup, like in the beginning, we're, we were all trying, or they were all trying to finesse the break. Like, yeah, you have to hit like this and there, and so much backspin, and so, th you know, very precise. And then at some point, we said, just, you know, just start breaking like you mean it and expect to make a ball. Mm -hmm. So, not too much finesse. Make balls. Rack number 10. Yeah, you also have to be able to recognize, Six to three. <laughs> in favor you know, of Mr. Chua. whether you hit the rack bad Mr. Chua, or break. if it's just not working. Yeah, too thick. Anytime you get past the side that easily with the cue ball on the cut break, that's too thick and now big opportunity. Big tester for Al Youssef. He finished third in this tournament last year. Real natural here to come for the two on the side with the three near. Looks like just high with a hair right English, maybe. There. I would think. Probably steep, the shot that you mentioned, two to the side, because he did look at the corner pocket, top left, if that's available. So maybe he's thick enough to draw behind this, behind the three. Yeah, like this. At first glance, I thought he was too thin on the one to do that. Now he's kind of gotten on the 50 a bit. If he cuts the two in, good for him. Still needs to get shape on the three, but he can play a nasty snooker on the nine. Sure, he gives away initiative, but it looks like a steep cut. But then again, he's down six, three. Made it look easy. Now, basically, the work is done. Just from the four to the five, that would be his last key shot, I, th I, th I think. The rest is open. Tricky. Yeah, you got a little flat, and any time that object ball starts to get away from the rail a bit more, those angles diminish as far as moving to the rail. Not so easy. Love to get back where he's at now. Nice. Didn't have a lot of angle. Don't underhit it. Make the five uh, at a good pace. Okay, mayday, mayday. Yeah, big time. I was watching the back arm. That's all I was watching, assuming the ball was down. But a little quiver there at the transition, like a little shake. You see the cue stick go a little right there yeah. at impact, so. Maybe not settled. Yeah, it, it uh, Ed, that's the conclusion. That's, it's 6-3, it's rack 10. Um, we haven't seen any rhythm from Al Youssef. Like three, four, five shots in a row with the same preparation, yeah. same speed.
It's like very stressed over every ball, it seems like. Yeah. You can go ahead and come to the side rail if you want, no problem. Eight up long is very handy with the nine near. Oh, yeah. Really kind of perfect angle here. Hard to fall on the rail and hard to get too close to the eight. That's the main thing is you don't. That's surprising there. Uh, a poor, poor hit, yeah. Caught the seven too thick to the pocket, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, these guys with all their experience, you know, they, they come here to Kielce Poland World Championships round one. Um, everyone here is anxious to get in the groove. And we haven't seen any of that. Not by Chua, not by Al Yusef. And this was an unforced error by Chua. He's still going to make the eight. So for 7-3, race to nine. It's not a cruise yet for Johan Chua because he's not giving himself Thank nice you. positions. And winter break, no lead is really that protected a la last year. SVB with a 10-3 deficit against Mika Emin. Oh and yeah, that was one of the best comebacks of the year, if not the well, I think it was just because he went on to win the title behind it. Yeah. I think the players are on the break. Wojciech Shevchek still playing on table one. Looking to book a two lead. And Curieri from Italy just started against Khalid. Al Gandhi. number 11 current score is 7 to 3 in favor of Mr. Chua Mr. Chua to break Chua with the break needs two wrecks to advance a lot more speed there and again the dry break I haven't seen too much of other matches going on on other tables. I wouldn't know how the tables are breaking, but on this table, the guys have trouble getting some, some consistency. Alex, I have to leave you for a little bit. I'm sure I'll be back. We'll do some more. Interesting to see where this match goes, but I certainly enjoyed it. Take care, Jeremy. Catch up later. Long straight in for Al Youssef. Can't follow, needs to come back with the cue ball. Wow. Beautiful stroke. Overcooked it by two, three diamonds. Nothing wrong with that stroke. Second thoughts about his safety. Two ball seems to go to the side pocket, but I don't see the value there. It's a difficult shot to get a difficult shot, so what? why would he want that? Yeah. 
pulled the trigger, but wasn't ready. Don't see any problems here. Come back enough. Did too much. With top, I think you can hit the left side of the seven. Come up high enough. Don't do too much. If you do too much, you risk hitting the seven too full. Just keep it light. That's good. To the end rail, come back again to center table, just a high ball. Very surprising miss by Johan Chua. It's not like he's cruising, but he's up 7-3, he's getting all the opportunities, he's had more table time. know what caused that miss but it should spur all Yusef on seven three down but the good news is he hasn't played well yet so just try, try and steal this wreck and get a good break in things that I would look at here a stun soft stun hit the low side of the four try and make the cube come back like follow that line of his cue or hit over the top where you make the four ball go back and forth between the long rails so you have a chance to make it in either one of the side pockets is open like they say in the Philippines Al Yusuf come on Chua left the back door open He's giving you a lifeline try and use it try and play with a little bit of freedom act like you don't care Now, if he if he opts for the bank to the side pocket and tries and hold the cube on the right side of the table, that makes the bank a whole lot more difficult than if you were to play with low left. So I say swing it round. Frustration there for all to see when he fell short on that five ball. It's not happening for Al Yusuf. stay on the right side or land above the eight ball to play the seven eight and nine to the same pocket
for an 8-3 lead. Oh, wow. Struggling for form. Yo, aren't you are so earlier? I was, I'm, I'm still guessing, but earlier I thought this is just, you know, anxiety to play well, to do well, find focus, find form. A bit restless, maybe low on concentration, but now I'm thinking maybe Chua has some form problems. When he was warming up, it was 10.30, 11, an hour before the start of the match, he was checking out his own stance, looking at his feet, where to put the left, where to put the right. So maybe there's more going on. A big miss. Yusef making sure to miss on the pro side, to overcut it. Still a fighting chance, but <laughs> Chua now playing the same shot. Really thin. Played with a hair of right spin, and except that you're not going to leave the cue ball close to the short rail. Yeah, good job. 7-4. Oh, you said we do a little bit of run. Thank you. A little bit of momentum, had a couple of dry breaks. Chua missed this nine ball to go to the hill. Wouldn't surprise me if things start going. Things start moving for this man. Brandon, can you bring me a new rack to table two?
Seven four. Oh, Yusef handed the lifeline by Chua Smith on the nine. To four in favor Big of difference. Chua. Eight three Mr. or seven uh, four. To break. But he needs balls on the break. Make it happen. to break with spin again. A little unlucky to hit that nine ball on the low side. The good news, he's starting to make balls, but forced to play push. Yeah, can he get the cue ball to where the I wouldn't do this. I would like to put the cue ball where the two is if I could. Push out called. If he plays it to where the four is, he gives oh, Chua too much to choose from, I feel. Mr. Chua, your option. He can kick and hold. He can attack the one. And if he doesn't like the angle, if it's not on, if the angle is on to play either of the two, he'll play it. And if it's not on, he'll give it back. That's what I meant by giving Chua too much to choose from. If he doesn't see the one, the jump is easy. Not too thick long as that one comes past the four it doesn't run into the four on its way back so a half ball hit yeah that's the hit you look for and a little luck and it's there I'm being joined by Phil Yates Affiliates in the booth. Welcome, Phil. Happy to have you here. Yeah, pleasure to be here, Alex. Just been doing the table one match where Wojciech Chefcik, considering that he's under pressure as the, the hometown hero or the, the home country hero, I thought performed very well to win 9 3. What a tough draw, you have to say, for both of these two, though, in the first round. Neither of the two has found any rhythm and form in this match, Phil. But at 7-3, with just a nine ball to pot, Johan Chua, you know, <laughs> very much looked like a done deal. But he ended up missing the nine. They traded a couple of misses back and forth on that same nine subsequently. And in the end, Al Youssef, 7-4 he made instead of 8-3 down. That could potentially become a, ga a game changer, that nine ball. What was very interesting for our viewers, if you've been watching this from the start, you probably don't know what happened on table one. We had 12 racks, of course, 11 of them. The player who broke made the one in the side. 11 out of 12. Well, on this table, it's far from it. Dry break after dry break. Well, we didn't see a single dry break because in the one rack where the one ball wasn't made, the eight ball was. So, clearly, different positions in the arena maybe affecting. Yeah, it's with this type of break. Once you uh, start to doubt, 
the thickness, the hit, how to hit it exactly can really go away from you. It's possible to actually lose it for a whole for the whole tournament. The confidence. If you remember the final that Albin Ocean and Shane played in the European Open, where they had no idea anymore how to break, how to make balls. Cross court and bank on the one. Two pockets available for the two ball. But to cut to the side, cue ball will head towards that eight ball. There's no future, I feel. So to the corner. Very missable. Cue ball on the rail. Good job. Alex, you're a, a wonderful judge of pool talent. Renowned coach, winning Moscow and he kept captain. How good is Chur at the moment and how good can he become? Uh, well, he's, today, he's not been good in this match. Um, so much so that I thought maybe there's some form crisis, you know, when, when a flaw creeps into one stroke, when they doubt their alignment. Or it's just concentration and the, the anxiety to do so well in the World Championships. He's made some silly errors. But it's just the first match and the tables are new. The balls are new. The Chua that we'll see tomorrow or in two days from now will be a whole different one, I'm sure. Looks to be playing with a little more pace, Chua. Looks at the nine to the side pocket. That would mean with the slight angle on the eight that he has stun draw. Little low, little left. Punch it to the long rail. Come back towards the kitchen. Yeah, that's better. Almost a warm feeling to get on the hill, especially with a four rack advantage. <laughs> this was his best inning in the in the match, actually. Where he looked the best. Thank you. Of course, with 128 players from 46 countries involved here, only the best are in attendance. And sometimes you can have a draw that pits two players who you suspect could well go deep. And consequently, there is a, a safety net, as it were, with the double elimination early. But you don't want to get involved in that, do you? Go on to the, the one lost side, because then you really are under pressure. And Chua and Al Youssef in the first round, that was always one of those draws that suggested it was going to be a, a really tough and tense battle. Yeah, it was tense. It was very cagey. So, and as expected, the first half hour, but then after they, they failed to pick up some sort of rhythm, but this looked good from Chua. One more to go Frank to advance 13, in the second round. Score is eight to four in favor of Mr. Chua. Mr. Chua to break on the hill. And this is open. Last chance for all Yusef, and it's a good chance whole lot better than what he has had in the match so far. It's 
stops just in time. That's a long backswing that Jeremy Jones and I spoke about. Long backswing, and on the shot, like he played on the one, it becomes sensitive. I've noticed with him over the years that I've commentated on him maybe two years now. The, the lengthy backswing looks aesthetically pleasing, but he's prone to sometimes decelerate. Yeah, that's the consequence. In general, I would say compact when you can and longer and more smooth when you must. Now, what is he going to do with this angle on the four? Will he hold or play topspin? Or even punch to the side? Visibly, visible there, how reactive the table plays. Hit that cue ball a hair low. That's the angle to go back and forth. Two long rails. A little bit tricky this, well tricky, it needs attention because he has a slight angle on the six. If he pockets in the left side of the pocket, the cuba will fall towards the long rail. He's keeping himself in the race. Well, after some of the extraordinary comebacks we saw in last year's championship, winning 9-8 from 8-4 down is doable. All he needs is successful breaks. Not why they're playing. He's not going Back to win to this match, match from 8-5 down depending on Chua's mistakes or misfortune. But I believe... Does have the memories from last year, of course, to fall back on. Performed so well in the championship. But of course, 12 months on, or 10 months on to be exact. Starting all over again. Right at the, the beginning, it is daunting to think, can I equal what I did last time? Well, a lot of pool has to be played. He had a great year last year. He started the year with a, a, a third place in the tournament in the States. Um, you're going to help me with that. And he had the third place in the World Championships, fifth in the World Pool Masters. Many good finishes, last 16 in the International Open. Then uh, he's lost 43 kilo, kilos over the past couple of months, which you know, me mentally, you know, he'll be feeling good, but also it'll, it'll be hard to lower expectancy. Yeah, he's done it the right way. There's no doubt about that, the weight loss, because facially he looks pretty much the same. It's gone off in the right places, hasn't it? And dry again. Yeah, different kind of match, Phil. That's why you're long done with that match on table one. We're still looking at the first one on table two. Eight five, but at least Chua doesn't have an open shot on the one. Talking about table one, Wojciech Chapchik coming through. I can tell you who he plays next. It will be Imran Majed from Great Britain, who defeated Marco Tutor from Holland. Tutor, you can do better than that. Tutor. No, Teutcher. Teutcher. <laughs> well, yeah, it's your language. 
Alex, in fairness. But you've got about six different languages, so you put me to shame. Well, what's one. the score? How much did Imran Well, win? Uh, Imran won 9 4. The Maharaja, always dangerous. Oh, nice shot. And a reward, look at that. Like in a pinball machine. Bumped himself into position on the two. Beautiful shot. So is this where the heart rate increases, Alex, when you look at the table and think, I can get out here to get in the next round? Yeah, he's missed some opportunities. He'll be wanting to finish clinically here. It's all about this shot from the three to the four. If he plays this well, I would give 50 to one that it's curtains. Um, no, 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 no. I'm not giving 50 to one. He, he should have been straight on the four. You can't change your mind halfway through. No, no. I said if he plays it well, but he didn't play it well enough. With stun, with the sliding cue ball, you can come past that five ball, top side of the five, or a cut to the side pocket. Yeah, that's good. Such a history of Filipino success in this championship. It will be really good to see the Filipino contingent not as voluminous as it's been in other years but it will be really good to see them going deep and creating interest in what still is an extraordinary pool nation just taking care of the details make sure that he can miss that nine ball coming off of the seven. So three balls away from the first victory in this year's World Championships, Johan Chua. The next match on, on table two is Chris Melling against the Vietnamese Hong. Well, you can't get rid of me that easily, Alex. I'll be around for the start of that one at least. And I'm looking forward to it because Chris Melling, to me, is a real underachiever, even though he's achieved a lot. I think he's got a wonderful cue action and he's always a pleasure to commentate on. Yes. He can do it all. English pool, snooker, he's played on the main tour. Won big titles in nine ball pool. Recently has had, had many successes in the Ultimate Pool Tour in, in the English Pool in the UK. But it's uh, curtains in the winner's side for Al Youssef from Kuwait. In the end, it all came good for Johan Chua who advances. So next match on is Chris Melling against Hoang from Vietnam in a little bit. We'll be back.
to your belt or your trousers? Yeah, my belt. I'll do that. I'll do that. That's fine.
All right, ne next matchup on table two. Ho Wang from Vietnam is playing his opening match in this World Championship. Up against Chris Melling. Hey, I got it. Chris Melling with the longest backswing in the building. Beautiful stroke when he's on, of course, but that goes for all of these top players. But Hong won the lag, so he gets the first break. First bite to the cherry. It was a really funny exchange, actually, between Hong and the referee, Marcel Eckhart. Eckhart said, could you please tell me how you pronounce your name? And Huang did it. And then Marcel said, can you say it again? And he said it again. And then finally, Marcel said, is it okay if I just call you Huang? And he said, yeah, that's no problem. So that's what we'll hear. Huang. With a successful break, one in the side pocket. And this is an open shot. He will hit the six. With left spin, he'll be able to see the three. But it would have been very difficult to get in line with the three. So the stop shot safety, a smart one, but he failed to stay underneath the six. So the jump is open. If he even needs to jump it, Oh, it's open. Look at this. A mistake by Wang. And he's such a, a keen potter that that kind of two ball is just meat and drink for Chris Melling. Yeah, Huang's full name actually is Duong Kwok Huang from Vietnam, a country that once reached the, the semi-finals of the World Cup of Pool. They've got some good players there. Needs to hold this cue ball. Using the whole pocket and more. <laughs> and some, now swing it around two rails. I said here for the first half of the match, the one before this, I said with uh, Jeremy Jones, we had a bit of a discussion on uh, backswing length and being compact. All of what we said can go out of the window when you watch Chris Melling play. Yeah, when you've got a, a cue action like him, as we have some technical difficulty there, when you have a cue action like him, the things you really need are timing and coordination. If they're working, great. He's so smooth. But the previous positional shot wasn't the best onto the six, and that's not the most telling safety either. No, surprised. He played it like he played it. it. Looked like he could also put the six in the middle of the short rail down below and send the cue ball up table. By the way, these two in a tough section of the draw. Whoever wins this match will take on either. Janus Kvaltsen Hansen from Norway, or more likely Chang Jun Lin from Chinese Taipei, and that's a, a tough hurdle to clear. Yeah, welcome to the wonderful world of nine ball. It's always like that. In this field, there are 20 players for me that could win the title, where it wouldn't be too big of a surprise, and there are 60 players. There would not be a surprise getting to the quarterfinals. Yeah, I think that's a really good assessment, actually. And I think I'll put Melling in the 60 players. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Chang Jun Lin in the 20. Barely, actually, by his recent form. Um... You know, he's a stone cold champion, but he wouldn't be in anyone's short list of winners, I feel. It's 
So he did get the rack in the end, Chris Melling. Leaving one back to the table. He'll regret that. He didn't get the required position on the six. While the referee is re-racking the balls, I can give you some completed match scores. It was tough at times for Max Lechner from Austria. He was 4-3 down to Max Eberle, but he came through 9-5 in the end. So that was a good performance by the Austrian. Nikos Economopoulos beat Ruben Batista, 9-3. Nick Vandenberg making his comeback. He's had a good win over a cheer from it? Chinese Taipei. Ronald Regley, it was Hill Hill with Ica Echeverria of Spain. Regley getting the verdict, 9-8. Sebastian Bakowski from Poland. What? The comeback trail in beating Simona Corral from Poland, 9-7. Marius Skonecki, he <coughs> beat Dominic Yastrav, 9-7. And I'll give you the others after this rack. First break for Melling in this match, in this tournament. Open hand break, played with side. Failed to make a ball. Now the only good thing for Melling is that it'll be difficult for one to get shape on the two. Pocket is blocked by the six. We saw that with that pocket on table one earlier. Bashar Hussain was making a minor comeback against Wojciech Shevchik, and he had the eight ball down the side rail, played it with pace for position. It rattled and rattled and refused to drop. He does see the one. Very difficult to get a thin enough hit on the one. I I like kicking the ball. I think we would try and kick it, try and make the cue ball come back down table. But he's actually going for the thin hit. That was so, so difficult. He called it thin, just not thin enough. Wang checking if he can reach it, stretching for the shot. With the hair of right spin, he can get the cue ball off of the short rail to the long rail. past the nine I think it does but I also think with top spin yeah Cuba runs into the nine if it's even on the two tough to see from here he's playing with draw Get close to the three ball. Nice. Let's the cue go. So, a couple of good strokes by Wong. One more. Actually, two more. If you get shape on the four, from the four to the five, will be the last task. Maybe consider a cut to the side pocket. I think that's what the plan is. If he addresses below center. Oh, 
Five to the corner. Good, so the work is done. He won the wreck, he just needs to win it. So that's when the pressure kicks in. Or the pressure. When it becomes harder to... When you have to focus harder. To get it done. Nice. He's playing confident. He didn't have a lot of angle. He could also have chosen to play draw. Seen two or three shots in this rack though, which suggests to me that Wang could possibly be a four in mowing side. Extreme side used to gain position on the seven, and now surely he's going to equalize. Yeah, we know little of Wang. But what he has shown in this rack is good. Winner break format. He broke from the right side. Controlled the cue ball. Made the one in the side. Where this wreck was a dry one break one. for Chris Melling. Wins a second. One each. Race to nine. So keeping my promise about giving you those scores. Pius Labutis from Lithuania. He's through and he will now play Neil Svayan. Next beating Mohamed Deida from South Africa 9-2. Another Hill Hill contest. Petri Makinen silencing the shouter, Elliot Sanderson, 9-8. Yeah, I had a quick chat with Elliot. He ran a five-pack, meaning he ran five wrecks to overcome, what was it, the 7-3 deficit. 8-7, then some rolls for the, the pin. third wreck to hang on to break. Scores one wreckage. Yeah, it's a tough school. It really is. On the right side, medium speed. Two out of two, one in the side for one. Just quickly while he's contemplating what to do, I can tell you. Petri Makinen's reward for beating Sanderson narrowly is a second round meeting with Ko Ping Chung, who was electric in beating Mikhail Kavankiak 9 1. The Czech player finding it very difficult against a Ko brother on form. Yeah, the Czech Gavankiak used to be some sort of a giant killer in Europe. Slow down a little bit. No shame to lose against the young Chung. Good safety by Wang. There's another hill hill battle going on at the moment. On table 14, Wu Kun Lin from Chinese Taipei and Fabio Petroni, former Moscone Cup player from Italy. Eight racks each. The winner to play Francisco Sanchez Ruiz in the next round. This type of shot will tell me how much the table slides. Foul and he stroke. anticipated, Chris Holland. Melling anticipated more slide. But it didn't open up that much. Okay. Was a good safety. Chris Melling is a former MVP in Moscone Cup. You know, he's well known. Won big titles, but this is going to be a tight match. Wang is a good player. And also, it's fair to assume that Melling, like us, hasn't seen an awful lot of him, so doesn't really know what the strengths and weaknesses are 
The well, strengths, it appears to me, far outweigh the weaknesses. Well, I think Belling knows enough. He's seen enough to understand that he's in for a challenge. He's calm, has a good cue ball, a good shot maker, made some good shots in the first rack that he won in rack two. And he's breaking good. And also, no shot clock at the moment. It would be not feasible to have 16 shot clocks going at the same time around this arena. But when the shot clock is introduced, if Wang is still involved, I don't think it will be too much of a hindrance. No, he plays in a nice rhythm. Oozes confidence. Actually, we were talking about Elliot Sanderson a few moments ago. He's in watching. So, quick wreck for one to take the lead. He broke, made the one, played a safe on the two. Melling failed to hit the two, ball in hand. There you go. One hand. Plays a third rack. And then you're there in the chair, being Chris Melling. Thank you. Being calm, waiting, but then again, at the same time, you don't want to be too patient in the chair. Telling yourself it's going to be not too, but you also need to have a little bit, or most players will need to have a little bit of anxiety to get back. Keep the fire burning. Gave you all those results between the previous two racks. I'll give you some live scores now. Marcel Price from Wales has taken the opening rack from Oliver Scholnocki from Hungary. Mika Immanen and Herson Martinez from Peru, 4-4. Mohamed Sufi, 4-2 up on Matthias Snigotsky. And Jonas Suto Camino, fine prospect from Spain. He's 3-1 up on Carl Naderberg from Estonia. Three out of the three. One ball on the side for one. And a clear shot on the two. <coughs> Far from easy though. The, the position a little harder than the pot itself. What can he play? I think with draw he, he could cut the two and miss the eight. Go straight up, short rail, and then back to mid, mid table. What he was pointing to for a bank in the side. This will work. Couldn't have placed the ball better with his hand. A lot of distance though between the three and four and from the four to the corner pocket. The type of shot you don't want to play but you must. And that will be a source of relief for Chris Milling because he's seen enough, as Alex said, of his opponent to know. Matches like this can get away quickly. Oh quickly, yes. Okay, and thereby, the road to glory in rack four is open. Don't overdo it. Don't try and come too close to the five. You might lose the cue ball a little bit. A little 
bump and thereby ending up on the 50 yard line. Let's swing his cue ball round now. Sharp. <coughs> Very nice. And note, he didn't load the cue ball up with uh, running English, with right spin. Just a trace to keep it alive. Chris Melling wins the record. Back on level terms. He's just celebrated Alexi's 44th birthday, Melling, and he's been at the top of the pool game for, well, over half his life. In 2001, in the World Nine Ball Championship in Cardiff in Wales, he reached the last 16, beating, on the way, the snooker legend Steve Davis. <coughs> I remember. Yeah, beautiful days. The Matchroom World Championships in Cardiff. Now, Carl Boys has just arrived. In a couple of racks, he's going to take over from me. That's the ultimate upgrade. Oh, I get to sit with Carl. Chris Melling. Chris Melling to break. Hasn't had a successful break yet. Foul stroke. And that's the polar opposite of a successful break. Bizarre how fast players can lose their, their feel and confidence for this type of break. It's a lot easier with, in the, with the old school break where the first ball was hit head on. It's much easier. It's less feel, it's just aim. Aim and of course explosivity. So Wang has broken well. So did Shevchik on table one first up. And yet others are really struggling. A little straighter would have been better, but this is still okay. Uh, and not because he wants to be close to the six or with the proper angle. With the seven being where it is. So now he's a little high. He can't draw because the eight blocks the pocket for the seven. By the way, the crowds on day one all around the arena have been terrific. Spread evenly because there are so many matches that people want to watch. But the total attendance, what a triumph. Unlike that shot. <laughs> yeah, he gave himself a lot to do. Didn't have a full pocket for the six, needed the correct hit on the seven. Me more a thinking error than an execution error. Awkward queuing for Chris. We'll try and send the six towards the upper short rail. Or twice across or thin directly. Shot. Now for amateur players, club level players, distance, containing safeties like these are good, but also on the top level, on the new table, speedy cloth, very difficult to control the speed. So an educated guess there by Wong, tracking towards the seven he had the seven eight nine to work for him so is this a good roll yes but still that route if he plays it ten times he would get the safety more often than not when it comes to the attacking part of the game the offensive part as it were 
Melling is right up there. When it comes to the tactical part of the game, it's, uh, for me, comparative weakness for him. Uh, comparative. Well, the, his, his kicking game, so this, the escapes, I think he's really good. But uh, regarding safeties, uh, yeah, regarding safeties, I see what you mean. In safety play, it's very, I think it's very important to to judge the moment and your capacity in that moment. Are you playing uh, a containing safety to wait, to not lose, or are you playing aggressive safety to try and get ball in hand? And if there's any critique for Chris Melling's defensive game is that sometimes he he picks very aggressive shots and that is because he's so talented so when he's on he can do nearly anything but then it becomes difficult to hold back maybe check sometimes yeah and I did say comparative because he's attacking game is so good that it would be very difficult indeed for every aspect of his game to live up to that as the, the seven ball wipes its feet but just about plops in enough angle to come over to the left side naturally Yeah, now being Chris Melling, I would understand if a worry starts to bubble up because his break isn't working and he needs to play really good to overcome that. Let me tell you, Khalid Al Gamdi, the very talented teenager from Saudi Arabia who won the Shane Van Boning Junior Open, which was played alongside the US Open last year. He's leading Daniel Corrieri from Italy, 7-5. Albin Auschen, runner-up last year, the winner the year before. He is 1-1 with Juan Carlos Exposito from Spain. Alexa Bashalsh, 5-2 up on Marco Dorenberg. And Dimitri Jungo finds himself quickly 3-0 down to, from the United States, Hunter Lombardo. So I think medium plus a different, he hit a different, it looked different. Thinner and harder. The players aren't allowed to soft break. So it doesn't have to be that he got a warning by the referee, just a mere threat of a warning will make players break with more speed. A stern look, a raise of the eyebrow, maybe. Tell you what, Marcel Eckhart, the referee, is no nonsense. Very good at his job. I like that he's put too close to the to the rail. If the two ball would have stayed a, like a ball and a half, two balls away from the rail, a kick and trying to make the four off of the two ball with the cue ball would have been easier. You know, what are his options? Short rail with the rest. Hit the two, hope to maybe make the four. looking at another route I don't really see another route yeah just come over there no he's looking well the thing is if if he finds a route to come off the top rail and hit that two I like his chances for a resafe 
with the six, eight, and nine. Keeps on looking. He doesn't like the shot coming off of the lower short drill. Wow. Foul stroke. Ball in it. Eh. So, call me the scrutinizer. But, uh, you know, this was the shot for him, but I spoke about him trying to be too aggressive at times in, in the defensive game. It was very difficult, the shot that he tried to play. So in that case, maybe just hit the lower short rail, get contact with the two, don't give a ball in hand, and he might still get lucky or make the four. Yeah, it was high tariff, there's no doubt about that. And I think also the amount of time he took over it, that was reflective of the scoreline. Had he been 5-0 ahead, I think he would have played that a little quicker. He's under pressure. There's no doubt about it whatsoever for two reasons. One, yeah, you're right, his break isn't working. And two, his Vietnamese opponent is looking sharp. He's looking very sharp. Didn't play the cue ball centre table to go... Two rails out, this is just one. Long way to go, race to nine. But there's always, especially if your opponent is breaking well, the fear of a pack being run against you. Four five for six pack doubles his lead four two and so one is settled manning is not well it's been very enjoyable alex so we'll be back on table two later on this evening to join you again now though i'll hand you over to the master of modesty call boys One up for two. Carl Boyes takes a seat. Break. Leading 4-2. While on the other table, Copenhagen is leading 4-3 against Aranas. And the Italian Corrieri, 6-7 down against Khalid Algamdi. Carlito. Captain. What's up? Oh, Ex-captain. Ex-captain. Should I say, what's going on, pal? Did you miss me? <laughs> Well, I always watch. It wasn't a convincing answer. <laughs> What's been going on in this match? Melin, 4-2 down. Uh, Wong is playing really good. Uh, really good. Uh, Wong looks the more settled of the two. Plays intelligent safeties. Doesn't force the issue and breaks well. It's not been run out pool, but he's, he's keeping initiative. Now he has a shot on the two with the four seven on the left side. What about Chris? Obviously he's been playing a lot of red and yellows. Does he have much table time? What's his cue ball look like? Uh, cue ball's good. Ball pocketing is good. It always is. Um, well, he, he, he lost safety battles. Wong played good safeties. There was this one situation in the previous wreck where Melling had an easy route to hit the two. And there was a ball nearby hanging over the pocket. And he chose, he had to kick. And he chose another route. He chose a very difficult route, gave away ball in hand. So maybe, you know, you can fault him for that. Interesting position this. 
looks like he's not playing for pos for position. This is what he looked at. He gives himself a natural angle to hide behind the eight ball. Eight and nine. Yeah, this type of play will not suit Chris. The fact that the one he's playing a little slow as well, Chris likes to get on with it. Yeah, but he's not a slow player, one. He's now a slow player because he doesn't he's not sure about how to play this four. Okay, jump it. So I said Melling, the longest backswing in the building. Let's see what it looks like on a jump shot. Can't be doing the same thing. Or can he? Devouring effort wasn't far away. But he's going to leave the pot now, so the safety shot has paid off. Yeah, that's it. Wong is winning the safety battle. And he's feeling good. You know, things are working. He's getting table time, open positions. Building a lead. So in not too long from now, if this keeps on going like this, we'll get to see to what extent Wong is able to finish it off, like to push on. Clinically. Does have a nice angle here so he can just float over to the left. Just coming past the eight ball. Shoot the seven in the top left. Is this float or stun? Well, probably no looking draw. at that. Yeah. No, probably no draw through the gap, okay. I like his rhythm. He's going to have to pop this ball around and just float over to the right. Yeah. Nothing for sure, everything for long. Speed looks good. Yeah, he pocketed it clean. He's doing the simple things right. Nine ball, nine out of ten matches is a game of mistakes. Make fewer and you you win. Wang Wang wins the record. So same recipe, solid safety, nothing too spectacular. And Chris Melling failing to get out of trouble. Looks quite tired as well, doesn't he? I wonder if he's had a bad sleep or something. Well, Wang flew all the way over from Vietnam. A lot of good players from over Vietnam. Went to Singapore two or three months ago and was impressed. I think I commentated on one of uh, Wang's matches and impressed me there as well. Over on table one, Eight the main table, Ko Ping Yi. Duang Duang to break. He's in a tie of the first Leading round against two. James Aranis. He's leading that match 5 3. Alex, I've noticed on the opening match that I commentated on with Wojciech, he made the one ball on the side every break. Yeah. What speed was he breaking with? Similar to the one we've just seen, that kind of pace. Oh, there. yeah. Yeah, but in, in general, like not in my first match that I commentated, in this match a little more, in general, I think players have a good feel for it. It's just that because it's a feel break that once a player starts to doubt 
when doubt creeps in that they can really lose it and lose it for the whole tournament. Yeah, because when this break was brought into the into the sport of nine ball, I think it was the UK Open last year, and the players was having a torrid time. A couple of players had got to good. Well, the, the, the two finalists, Shane and Albin, is where now we are seeing early on good signs of players pocketing the one, but the shot's gone wrong, so they need a good jump shot. Where's the cue ball? Well, he bailed himself out of trouble. This might well sneak past the eight as well. Yeah, it does, but it's very tight. If it's a natural angle to attack the pocket and drop the cue ball on the rail, then it is, it does, it goes. He will. Shot. Very missable. Over on table three, the young 17 year old sensation from Saudi Arabia, Khalid Al Galmadi. He's 8 6 over Carrieri from Italy. He's at the table. It's been a tight match. But he's looking good for the win. Steady Eddie. One. Yeah, he seems to do a lot of things wrong, he? he? seems to have a nice cue action. Yeah. Chris just needs to be patient and hope some sort of mistake comes so he can capitalize. Of course, but oh, there it is. There it is. And th this is actually what I meant. 5262. Two. Is he going to make an unforced error because of the way things are going? Yeah, the cue ball just ran on, so you can see his hand there. The nine ball was slightly impeding him a little bit. It's caused the error. The ball needs to bounce, it could land short, he's going to get there, he's okay. <laughs> wow. Big miss by Wong. Chris is playing with a new Q, he's signed with Q-Tech, and he's now a Q-Tech player. Chris Melling wins the record. 5-3. He's also the type of player who can rattle a few racks off very quickly and before you know it, he could be easily losing this match. Yeah, but he hasn't made a ball in the break yet. Struggling with the break. That's understandable when you're not playing this game. Yeah. You know, your speed, your touch, the safety play, the break, they're the things that would go. You know, we know he's a great cueist. You would fancy him potting balls, but it depends what type of positional shots he's going to be faced with. Well, I, th I think with this type of break, if you're not making balls with with finessing the break, I say just just you know uh, break them hard, and then rather overcut than undercut. You don't want to hit them thick. Lose the cue ball, let the cue ball go, like first We're diamond, nine. long Chris rail, break. then short Turning rail. Three, but at least give it speed and don't give away an open table. Yeah, Rather awesome. thin than thick. Yeah, the break is nowhere to be seen for Mr. Mel. We need to work on this. If he's going to go deep. So he hit it way thin, way thin, and low on the cue ball. Don't know if, if that helps him, but in this case, chances are bigger. You're not going to leave an open table. If you hit thick, uh, you're going to leave an open shot many times. Push out cold. Double knockouts to the last 64. So there is a leeway. The option, Chris. Yeah, Chris will play this, I feel. And hmm. It's a good push. Please play again. If that one ball would be one inch further off the short rail, I'm sure Chris Melling would have played it go for the safety behind the seven. Yeah, 
one can play containing safety, one to the seven. It's difficult to hold behind the seven with the cue ball. Wow. Foul stroke. Ball in head. The cue ball's got him. I thought there might have been a case for the bank in the other corner to the bit of left spin. Thank you. Some sort of a two way up. Tricky. Yeah, he did not want to attack this straight back. Was a nice, eff uh, nice effort. I mean, it was a great stroke. He just got called out by the new claw. Cue will arc back. Good call by Chris. Yeah, and it might not even be a, be a case of a good call because he knew the difficulty of the shot. It might have been a good call because he, he just doesn't feel like he's in a place to play a shot. You know, he's definitely not playing much nine ball. Mr. Mellon, he's focusing. Yeah, but I, I was thinking when I saw I was going to do commentary on his match, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the player. I think he's in a, be in a better spot when he's he go comes in and out of the game. Yeah, a bit undercover, right? Yeah. So now he has done well for himself in the Ultimate Pool Tour. I think he, he's, he's won like four events. So that's really good. No, I think everything looks good, but the break. And he's a field player. You know, it, it could happen mid-match right now. And then he say, yeah, and then I, I felt like I had to, to hold my pinky here, my thumb there, and then it started working for me. Action of Mr. Nelly. Chris Melling wins the ring. Couple of mistakes. Just kind of got Chris back in this match, but the break shot seems to be the one that's eluding him. Yeah, I don't think he's the best of health at the minute. Looks like he's got some sort of cold or something. In 2012, there was a matchroom event in Kielce, here in Kielce, in Poland. The World Pool Masters we called it the miracle of Kielce. Four Polish players made it to the quarterfinals. A Polish final in the star-studded field. Skowerski, Skowerski ending up winning it. Break it was amazing. Break. Did he play in the final? Yeah. Five, yes. The two Polish quarterfinals, who were they? Um, uh, Shevchek and the other one, I don't know. Open bridge, Mr. Lely. Did he get a roll? Is it open? So the one ball came past the side pocket, meaning meaning he would like to manipulate it a little more make it go forward so a little thinner a little more draw on the cue ball to give top spin to the one difficult push for one if the shot is not on Real first, I don't know what he could play from here. Yeah, it looks difficult to play some sort of attacking shot, doesn't it? Just oh, yeah, but even defense, what? I don't, I don't think there's anything on there. No shot clock. I'd say take your time here. Look, it's the, the one is going to run into the seven, probably. It's very difficult 
to make that one miss the seven and not make the cue ball go forward towards the pocket. Yeah, and even if the one does miss the seven, where's it really going? It's not coming down the table, is it? Yeah, so it's going to stay up here. I really need the roll. Wow. Mm, I'm looking at his body language. No hands, gesture. No sorry. Is it open? I was obviously trying to kill the cue ball, wasn't he? But yeah, but where's the one go? It's too <laughs> difficult. I think Chris can pot this. Yeah, he can pot it, so it's a nice gap, but... Have to do a bit of some really kill this with a bit of swing or something. Yeah, drag with left. I'm sure, I'm sure many pool players back home, especially like 10 years ago when, you know, in the, the best days of Chris Melling in nine ball pool, when he played Moscone Cup, became MVP, players at home copied his style. Make that bridge length, just try and feel if that works for you. And the tricky thing is, you know, if you hit a couple of shots good with that type of cue action, it feels great and it looks amazing. But for most players, for mortals, it's difficult to control to get any sort of consistency. Yeah, I think that was his downfall when he tried to make it at snooker. Where he tried to? When he tried to make it on the professional Oh snooker yeah. Tour. Yeah, you can't have a long bridge point at snooker. little bit tricky this he'll get it of course oh he can just play straight top i thought this was that in between angle like stun run through stop shot is good or draw for an angled shot of the nine everything changed when one missed that smelling seven ball to go up 60. Toilet. You can go toilet. Toilet and straight back there. Yeah. Our little break, we'll be back. Players are taking a timeout. Action on table two on day one in Kielce, Poland.
the 11th rack, corresponding to break, five racks each. Here's the Chris break. He's getting a little closer, that hit the point. Still ahead. Okay, no, please, Chris. No, speared along, two ball in. You can see when the cue ball comes off this rail, it goes below the nine. The perfect break seems to come off the rail and hit the nine. That's when things seem to happen. Yes, but I've spoken to players who, and this is, you know, in a perfect setting when they're feeling good, probably on their own table, where they can actually, not 10 out of 10, but where they play to either hit the nine or not. What, you know, the, the few times that I've tried it, when working with the player, tried it myself, what works for me, if I sort of try and arc it around the nine, but not a huge arc, it's not a banana shot, like 20 degrees, bend, and play with your playing cue. The beauty of this, though, is the fact of what we're seeing now. Chris has got a tricky long ball, which causes the mistake. It's not just simple pool that we're watching anymore. That will come and go, but... No, we're watching play. Play meaning doubt, shot selection, save, resave, push-outs. And sometimes lack of rhythm in a match, which will give players difficulty with that straightforward between brackets ball running. Big moment now from 5 2. He's, he's made a couple of errors. I'd like to win this rack now with this opportunity. Yeah, but he, for me, he only made that big error on the 7. The ones after were not big mistakes you know when he straight back that one ball and scratched the cue ball top left you know that's there was a valiant effort it wasn't a blatant error for me needs to Straight enough on the six, doesn't want an angle, a big angle. Uh oh. Just about perfect, actually. Result from the outside table. Shane Wolford to America. He beats Filler 9-4. But it's not Joshua Filler. This is why Pierre Filler. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. And you said that, and then my my stomach turned a little bit. Now stomach turned. Hey, uh, Wolford is a good kid, but w it would be uh, one of the big surprises on day one. Well, he's got his win against the filler, even though it's the wife. The name oh, mentioned a lot, Shane Winston. Wolford, to make it to the team, Team USA. Did not in the end, but will probably do so in the not too distant future. Yeah, another, another result, Kelly, the 17-year-old, who beats Carreri. Nine racks to six, so he advances. Have you had a chance to mooch out there and have a walk around the tables, the arena, Alex? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This morning, yesterday. It's nice. Tables look perfect. Pocket size, pocket cup is perfect. It's already tight enough for players to not, like, you know, they're, they're cautious, and then in three, four days from now, even 
more so when that extreme slide wears off. I liked it on day three, day four, now day three, day three, I think. When 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 the ball goes and the player is moving, expecting the ball to drop, and then it does not, and players realize, okay, it's a different different game now. Yeah, this is on table one on the opening match. Wojtek and Bashir, to be fair, they potted. I think there was one break where they didn't make the one in the side. It was a break in clinic, and I was like, I was a little concerned, thinking, is everyone going to be doing this? As as it got to that stage, but this is this is pleasing. These boys are struggling. A little bit of work to do with the tight pot to the side pocket on the three, and then wants to be straight on the four, or straight enough or on the right side. So he needs to move the cue ball over center table at least mm -hmm. cue ball just kept going Mr. Lane but it's okay for it was queuing can he? He can draw, he can go around the six. Nice shot. Yeah, you said it before, melling, ball pocketing, position, you know, that's always good. always good it's never always good but it's one of his his qualities and his kicking game just needs to get that breakdown when we hit the Moscone Cup in Vegas first two days I felt the Americans were outbreaking us you know getting more positions making more balls it's difficult then in the practice room you know uh, what are we going to do half a tip more low 10% more speed and then we all decided to just go ahead and break you know break them hard break them with commitment yeah, Mr. Melling there didn't get on the line how he would like, and that is what can happen. It makes it miserable, and because he's not fully in tune, he can force the mistake. Big moment coming up here, he's got to shoot the bank in the top left. Top left, straight back. If you miss it, you want to miss it on the short side, so on the short rail, where it would bounce back approximately to the third diamond or just go all in. Not, didn't really like that pace, did you? No. No, this, even if you go all in, don't play it at this uh, speed. Give the pocket the chance to be friendly. That's fine, thank you. So, Melon got away with one then, missed the nine seven. ball. Wrong, Mr. Bank. Six six. Yeah, a little bit under it. You might be right. And you see six six. It's now. Race to three over on table one. Coping Yi was leading James Aaron 7 4. That was probably the tie of the first round. 
Yeah, many tough matches out there. Chris. 13 frack, cross man to break. Open bridge. Six frack. Close each. bridge. Action. This, this is what I meant. Break like you mean it. Corner ball made. The cut with position on the two, ultra difficult. Cue ball being so close to the rail. And, you know, he cannot over hit it. That five on the left is a big ball. Let's watch the stroke, close to the rail. Forced to make it a little shorter, his backswing. Shot, very nice. That's a winner. Great shot. I thought that looked a little raily. Raily, what's raily? Yeah, a bit too far into the rail at first place. Oh yeah, well, you know, he missed it, but he made it. He hit it good enough. It was a tough shot. Can get ahead of himself. From the six to the seven is a little bit tricky still. Difficult speed or sensitive speed if he needs to drag the cue ball, go to the top rail and back out again. And stay on the correct side of the six. Can you go forward off the two? Yeah, that would be easier then, easier to control. Hmm, this was a magical chance, Chris Melling. The break, the ball down, and then that good shot on the two. I don't think he's going to hit the seven. Depends on the speed. Horrible shot this. Where's the cue ball going to go? Wow. Do you play this center ball, Carl? I was never very really good at hitting center ball. Oh, this is, this is a horrible shot to play center with a sliding cue ball. <laughs> that's that's your Chris Melling touch. Yeah, I think he, he was thinking the same. He doesn't fancy a centre ball, so both the drag is a beautiful shot. Nice. Oh wow. Great wreck. Great out. So what did he do? He cut that two ball in. Chris Melling. Was in position, then What's lost it? position to the five. Played the five to the six, ended up short, cut the six in. And a great seven ball. That's a match winner. That might be the match winner. That shot on the seven. Taking the lead for the first time since 1 0. Second match on table two on day one. Many hard fought battles. Have you seen? A runaway match or heard of one? Sanchez Ruiz. Oh, him again. 9 0. He oh. was at it again. So sure. What was the final result with Nick Vandenberg? I know he was in a tight battle. Uh, he won. Uh, I don't uh, 9 7, I think. But a good win nonetheless. 
Nick Vandenberg's been away from competitive pool recently. He won the national championship on television, a big match, 8-7 in the break. final against Payen. And then got the call up the from Emily six. Fraser from Matchroom. Matchroom pool and, you know, that first win against a Taiwanese player. Shows a lot. He's ready. The one ball is getting a little closer to the side for Chris. Now he hits top side. Hmm, we can hit it on the left. Bump the one to the right side of the nine. And bring the cue ball behind the six. Don't try and play two rails with the cue ball. Because then the one is not going to be fast enough. Of course, there are other options. This seems to be there. Okay, so focus on the cue ball. Play two rails. It's it's a choice by so what I suggested one rail with the cue ball, then you you control the one a little better, a little closer to the nine. You focused a little more on the cue ball. Now uh, we've seen in the beginning of the match uh, a kick shot position where Melling had an easy hit. Easy hit chose a much harder route and it ended up in a ball in hand for one. Now a very studious Chris Melling looking to make something happen and really with the seven, eight and five on the top half and these six balls down table, big chance for him to resave if he plays with any speed. Well, it works. Even if the pocket is open, if the one passes the six, he's on the wrong side of that line, so cue ball will track away from the two ball. Buying himself some time. One can cross the one, bring the cue ball behind the six. It's sensitive. He'd leave the one ball open. Can send the two rails, the one ball around the six, back up table towards the seven. Good shot. Yeah, very impressive. Uh, shot indeed. He's definitely getting the better of Chris in this department. Yeah, but now, so he's going to hit the ball. Uh, I'd say 50 50 resafe. So assuming he's going to clear the six, which he should. 50 50 for him to make the ball or resafe. So he's looking, oh Carl, look, he's looking at a kick shot. But here I think, jump it. So many good things can happen from here. I feel he's even, he's almost favorite to resave. Couple of options for one. Can bring it behind to four. 
Uh, he cannot hit the one thin enough on the left side. To clear the six and two. So not so many options actually. He needs to go to the right side with the cue ball. Shot. Again, Alex, very good speed, line, everything is very nice. This is difficult now, <coughs> this one. Yeah, what's the route? What is the route? Well, you can go long rail on the right side, short rail, and then towards the one. So right before the side pocket, long rail, towards the first diamond on the short rail right, and then towards the one that's on. I think that's the easiest route. Actually, it's it's still a difficult shot, but if you aim right before the side pocket, the rest is left spin. So if you if you hit right before the side pocket, if you hit center left, it's too much. If you hit just high, it's not enough. So somewhere in between. That's the shot. I mean, that's the only route that he has actually. He doesn't like it, or he doesn't see it, or it's not on. I think it's on. I think you're right. I think he's trying to come with something a little bit more juicy. He's known for these wacky shots, so I think he plays up to it as well. Uh, this is really tight. He's trying to make it. So what he's looking at, like hit towards the third diamond. He needs to come real close past the eight ball. Closer. Foul stroke. It's good effort though. Ball Only it. just missed the one. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So now ball in hand. Has bumped that three ball in a slightly harder position to get to for one. Slightly. Probably, it's likely he'll have a, an angle on the three where he'll run into the four. Another Polish player has pretty much just started out on table three, Thomas Kaplan. He's playing the younger brother of the three, Copenhagen. Oh, Copenhagen. He's the worst of the three. <laughs> it's a little harsh. No, it's not harsh. They're all <laughs> in there. I mean, he's the only one to still win a world title. But a great player. Leading one, no. And great guys, too. Two. All three That's of them. Great. Very laid back. Taking his time, one. Getting to the closing stage of this match. Nice. He hits the balls nice, also in trickier positions. Um, Keeps hitting the ball with positivity, no despair. Keeps his finesse and under pressure. That's the first thing to go in general. Yeah, we're 
approaching the juicy part of a, a race to nine now. If you can take care of these four balls, this is always a nice spectacle and some of the fans, oh, he's lost the cue ball here, Alex. He's lost the cue ball, he needs a little bit of fortune. Fortune, there it is. It's not easy, but he's lucky. L lucky, I mean, he's happy to at least have a shot. Count your blessings. Be careful though here. Nice. Also that stroke, no despair. Often, you know, tricky position, you see a player overhit it, do too much. Five two. Wong was playing for a 6-2 lead, missed an open 7-ball. And from there it became this, 7-7, seven, seven, and a race to 2. Tong Wang. That's a wreck. Over on the feature table, Ko Ping Yi beats Aranas, one of the pre-tournament favourites, advances into winner's qualification. Aranas lives to fight another day. He's got to win two matches out of two now to make his way through to the final 64. Win two out of two in this shark tank because <laughs> it's a shark tank. There's a few to be had out there, Alex. Let's not get silly. There's a few. As you said, race to two. Long to break. He's been hitting the break pretty good. Last one, missed the one ball. What's he got now? 15th rack. Seven racks each. One one to break. Oh, nice. Here comes the two. Is it going to stay over the side or is he going to land awkward? It's all oh, dressed up. That's how you say it, right? It hit the knuckle. So that last rotation, look at this. Oh. I think he's okay to roll with the right spin, get to the short rail. And fall in a approximately 30 degree angle on the three. He's aiming low. Oh, you have to drag it. This, look, this was a great shot. Uh, speed is beautiful. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of quality. Look where he puts the ball. 7-7. Seven, seven. And then do this. From here on out, it's a straightforward wreck. He still needs to do it, but there was a, a hell of a shot. Now, I said he hit everything without despair. Can't overhit this because he'll lose the cue ball. Don't expect him to. He plays them shots very nice indeed. Gets a lot out the cue ball. Any kind of small angle, you can force the cue ball down. On the club table, I don't mind staying on the right side of the eight ball, but out here, Wait. really center table. No, he's staying on the right side. Guys, be a bit careful. Hmm. Ooh, with you there. This is a little bit. Well, there's a couple of ways. Will he still force it off the second rail, Alex, or will he just uh, it off from the here? Wall? I think top, but it depends on the exact angle. Two rails. Yeah, he had a good angle. Okay. Again, look at the speed. It's just come round to an unmissable nine to get on the hill. Wang on. What's the record? Nice out by Wang. That shot from the two to the three. Very nice. He couldn't roll it. He had to drag it. Very sensitive. You need to be very cool and calm to play it like he did. The 
finish line in sight. Wong has to break his last break of the match. And as far as he's concerned, the last break in the match. Yeah, we're going to hold on for the second. Little hold up. Two minutes, he says. Two minutes. Two minute break, but it looks a bit. Yeah, it's unfortunate, Carl, that Skylar Woodward couldn't make it. He ran into some aviation problems. They had in Dallas, I think, there was ice, ice on the, on the tarmac. I, I've said. He couldn't make it due to the weather circumstances, but it's a pity because he, he was really playing good last four or five months. Yeah, many of the players from the Derby City Classic kind of made the way from there to here. He chose to go on for a day. Yes. And it's proved to be costly. But at least he gets a week with the family. Yeah, that. But I was actually looking forward to seeing him play here because uh, I wasn't enjoying s seeing him play as he did during the Moscone Cup, but now I would. Yeah, it was unfortunate. But this seems to be the type of thing that is going on around the world now. Right? Waiting to resume. One against Melling. It's 8 7 for the Vietnamese player. Yeah, this all just adds to the drama at the end of this match. I'm sure Wong would like to just get the game underway. He's won the last couple of racks. Just that extra time to think about what's going on. Thank you. Here we go. Back to the action. Rack 16. Yeah, but in this well, match, I haven't seen him do too Leading many things seven. wrong. I mean, I don't expect him to, to fumble the ball with the finish line in sight. It looked cool, calm. As did his break here. Almost too soft, I, I would think. Good news for Melling fans. Melling's going to get out the chair. Not many balls on the table though, so that always proves a little dicey with the safety. There's no clusters or anything. Everything is open. Uh, do I like this as a push out? Yeah. Because it's unlikely that if Melling plays it, push out cold. If he takes it and plays it, it's unlikely for him to play deadly snooker. It's not there. It's a, it's going to be a hittable two ball. Your choice, Chris. I think Chris will give it back. He will have noticed his Please opponent. Play again. He's very adept at this side of the game, but maybe Chris just didn't do up to it. No, but but Melling is probably going to see the full two or part of the two. I expect Wang to just bunt the two ball towards the second, third diamond on the left. I don't see what else he could play from here. Now, if there's also a scratch possibility, then if the cue ball could pass the six, that would be even harder. Maybe so hard that he's now looking to attack the two ball. Wow, he's jacking up. Whoa! Wow. Ho, ho, ho. What a shot. 
Did that go in after six? No. Are you sure? Yes. Well, no. <laughs> 98 98% sure. Look. Oh, it did. You owe me 20. Good call. 20 sloty. <laughs> I'll take that off you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, they say Lady Luck favors the brave. An all out attack, now he's playing defense. Good pace on the three. I think he played it with spin on the cue ball. Yeah. Don't like that. Oh, no, no, man, tap this ball. If he's not quite feeling the throw of the, the cue ball and the spin. Yeah, but the, the, the straight back is kissy. You would need to hit it with quite a bit of pace. Well, he might play it off the floor on the side, knowing Chris. I've watched him play a lot of, there you go. He's had a look. Yeah, why not? It's a better shot, actually. If you're not feeling the safe, yeah. why not fly it into the pit? And, and, but maybe, maybe, you know, if he plays that, he can play it with top with topspin and the topspin would hold the cue ball near the short rail or even hook him behind the five. Is he having a go? A three off the pink floor into the side. No, he tried to spin it. Good shot. Oh wow. Very good shot. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful shot. To have that finesse at this point in the match, that's quality. Yeah, he clearly didn't fancy it, but I think in the end he decided to, you know, that's just trust in the action and play the Yeah, shot. the most sensible shot. Is there a jump bank? He does have the jump cue in his hand, could do with having another look. Well, there's always a jump bank. Uh, in the side pocket? No, I don't think so. I think I would hit it thinner, send it towards the 6-9. Hope to get lucky, maybe save, behind the 5. Jumping with a full cue, he's not took a little bit off the end. Wow. <coughs> Needs us to be fans great. He doesn't need to force it. The four is available. Make it at a nice pace. <coughs> Good shot. That will have looked a little scary behind the ball. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. At this point in the match, what do you think? Natural angle, come around to five. And then it's game on. Looks to go hill hill here. Two rails and out. So this is looking like Hill Hill, and is Mr. Melling going to save his best break to the very oh, end? Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's what it feels like to me. Good break, open table, with a shot. go folks we're about to see a final rack thriller here Chris on Mellon table two of the magician mr melon ties it up he'll be breaking in the decider yeah good match hard fault match not too many mistakes some nice safety battles <coughs> still looking cool 
swung, but he knows it's not in his hands. All he can do is wait and hope. Thanks, guys. Final rack. Chris Melling. Yeah, this is it, Chris Melling. Last couple of breaks have been better. Ooh, ooh. That was a very thin. You know yourself, Alex, you're an accomplished player. When you're not quite feeling the break, when you're behind it, you, you know, as these breaks come back at you, you fancy hitting a good one, but when you're not seeing it, when you're not feeling it, it's so hard, isn't it? Mm. Not an easy position for safety. And not an easy position for attacking the one. I think I, if I would attack from here, I play it top right and stun with outside. Cuba would go long, short, and then come flat back towards the two, towards center table. Or all the way down, even. Cuba's going to pop the two here. can cross the one, bank it back, where it would be likely for Melling to see the one. He can cut it, hit it on the left, clip it, and then the, the nine would be a big ball to hide the one ball behind. Tough shot on the hill, but I know what you mean. Okay, okay. Wow. <laughs> oh, 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 what did he do? How have you got the cue ball there? He's had to it absolutely perfect, oh. hasn't he? Wow. This is like when you're the opponent, you look at the table, you think, okay, he can do this, he can do that. Oh, he's already getting ready. Boom. Hook shoot behind the nine. Over the distance to kill the cue ball. That was impressive. Hit the ball. I think here, hit the ball. This is on the TV table, new cloth, very uh, sensitive with this angle. How high is he going to hit the cue ball? How much will it arc? Anything but full in the face. On the left or on the right side, and he has a chance of saving it. Foul stroke. Ball in hand. They were disappointed he missed that, I'm not saying. Thank you. It was easy, but Chris prides himself in kicking these balls and giving himself a look. Five ball will pop past the nine. He's got to play it into the rail. Oh, yeah, and before that, there's a tight four ball. And the six looks like passing the eight ball, but it's not easy from where the five is. So, Percentage-wise, Carl, what would you say here? One to get out, 50%? Mm, maybe a little higher from what I've seen. I don't yeah, no. Okay, 55, 52 or something. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, on these new tables with the balls and the clock, as we say a lot, that five ball, it looks weird as a player because you're 
you're used to aiming middle of the pocket, have, but it will go easy. Have you seen, did I miss like a close up or do you say it from this perspective? This perspective. Okay. I, and, and obviously watching matches that I've seen all day and you just know you can play this into the rail, it'll swallow it up. But you want to be straight on it and a little closer because I'm with you. You'd like to draw back a little bit for this six. There's the bounce. It's a good angle. Now, if the six goes no problemo, he doesn't have to get too silly with the cue ball. But you'd still like to come back, wouldn't you? This pocket will swallow this ball, though, I'm convinced. But don't play Yeah, too otherwise he would have. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that. It went straight in. So maybe this is the ball all along. Nice. And that's going to be it because this just can't really go wrong now, can it? Done the hard work. Cool as a cucumber. Dong Kwok Wang. The promised land is in sight. Two balls for a 9 8 win. Yeah, you can just draw it back onto that rail now. And it, it's a good one. He's played many good shots. This is really the type of victory that you know would settle your confidence. Wong from Wong. Vietnam right. advances to round two. On the winner's side, Chris Melling back to the left side of the board. Still has a chance to make it to the last 64. That's it. Wong advances. A great hill hill victory. Tables are designed and manufactured from the highest quality, sustainable hardwoods, utilizing world-renowned designs. Diamond tables are unparalleled for playability and durability. After all, they are designed by players for players. This championship is being played with the new RMS tournament set. Featuring a unique molecular structure, it guarantees razor-sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity. Unquestionably the best pool balls in the world, this set is available in a TV and a value pack version, as well as in the new My RMF range of ball and cue cases. Now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go. My RMF, bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience. <laughs> 